Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. I am Joel. If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to the minute with the latest MTG Finance news and deck strategy for Pioneer, Standard, Commander, and Brawl, or just see us open some booster packs, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. Let's go ahead and jump into one of my new favorite Pioneer Tribal decks that I built, Zombies Tribal. Okay, so this one has been a lot of fun. Stick around after this deck tech. We've got some gameplay. I played against a green black graveyard deck and a uh, and a new perspectives deck. Oh my gosh, you got to see that one. It is insane. The deck itself, we've got four concealed courtyard, four godless shrine, four isolated chapel, some swamps, and three unclaimed territory. We are running white for corpse knight. Wayward Servant, some Fragmentize, some D-Spark, and some Anguish making, Unmaking in the sideboard. But these, Corpse Knight, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses a life. And Wayward Servant, whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. These win games. These cards, especially Wayward Servant, and especially if you start getting them in doubles on the battlefield, absolutely win games. Crit Breaker at our at our one drop slot. You know this card, you love this card. It was in the Pro Tour Zombie deck. Dread Wanderer. Again, we know it, we love it. It was in the Pro Tour uh, uh, Zombie winning deck. We've got four Thought Seas. This protects us against control decks. These can come out if it's the right deck and we don't wanna and we don't wanna play the Thought Seas. Relentless Dead, fantastic card, keeps coming back. Two two for two, love it. We talked about Corpse Knight and Wayward Servant. We've got Diagraph Colossus. This is one of our finishers. Enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter for everything on it that has died and is in the graveyard. Whenever you cast a zombie spell, create a 2-2. So you cast this Diagraph, you cast something after it, you're getting extra triggers off a of Wayward Servant. By the way, that trick also works with Crypt Breaker. Pay two, tap it, discard, put a 2-2 two, two onto the battlefield, triggering your Servant, triggering your Corpse Knight. That's how I won the first match that you'll see against a green-black graveyard deck. Past that, we've got our Lords. Lord of the Accursed, our other zombies get plus one, plus one, and you can pay two to give all zombies menace. And Death Baron, Skeletons, and other zombies you control get plus one, plus one, and have Death Touch. Top of the curve is Dark Salvation. Target player creates X, two, two zombie creature tokens, and up to one target creature gets minus one, minus one for each zombie that player controls. I mean, for, for three, you're creating a zombie. For five, you're creating two zombies. You're triggering your Wayward Servants. You're triggering your Corpse Knights. And their life total is just sinking, 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 sinking. In the sideboard, we've got Fragmentize for when we have to deal with Hardened Scales or other pesky artifacts or enchantments. We've got Self-Inflected Wound when we've got to deal with Boggles style gameplay and make them sacrifice that creature. A lot of times they only have one, maybe two, and only one of them is normally protected. So Self-Inflected Wound is a three up coming in great against that deck. Lifebane Zombie, again, great against the uh, green-white decks that are running around like crazy. This turns into uh, Thoughtseize on the stick, specifically for green and white decks. D-Spark, uh, permanence with converted mana costs four or greater. We can remove those if we've got some kind of, you know, Fires of Invention or something big that's really bugging us. And ang Anguished Unmaking when we're fighting in maybe a mirror and we've just got to go into kind of kill all the things mode in maybe a game two if we want a game one. Let's jump into some gameplay and we will meet back here afterwards. So this is game one against Green Black Graveyard. It ends up. Um, we like the opening hand. We've got two one drops. We've got two one drops. Sorry, we've got three one drops and one two drop and our Diagraph Colossus at the top of it. Then we see that we've got an Accursed Servant as well. So if you saw, their first turn was insane. They cast Stitcher Supplier, they got Narc Amoeba and a uh, Prized Amalgam off the top, right into the graveyard and right onto the battlefield. We're already a little nervous about what's happening, but we do have the two servants there, so if we can just get a white mana, we might can get online and try and turn this game around. 
Luckily, we absolutely top deck the white mana there. We start getting online with our wayward servants and we play a dread wanderer after that to go ahead and get the trigger, start getting some life back. We're gonna swing. We stay aggressive with this deck. If stuff dies, that's not really the worst thing in the world for us. Fills up our graveyard for Diagraph Colossus. It has the ability to recur, so if we can kill a thing of theirs, even though it is a graveyard deck, it doesn't really matter. We sw They swing, we're taken all the way, we're down to eight. So here, we again, we can play Wayward Servant, and now we're getting the double trigger on the Crit Breakers. So life totals are very, very even, even though they got off to an absolute sprint of a start. And because they're tapping out to swing at us, we get to clap back just as hard. Now, they're again huge for them. They play the spell that gets two of the um, three damage, three life, I can't remember the name of it now, spells right off the top, Creeping Chill, right off the top, and you're just like, wow, we had them so low, and now we're at five and they're at 10. However, we're in pretty good position here. We've got the Crypt Breaker so we can discard cards. We're trying to decide exactly what to do. We're gonna swing with these. Relentless Dead can come back if needed. The uh, Dread Wanderer, that's fine if it dies to the Narc Amoeba, gets another blocker off of the field for them, makes our Diagraph Colossus bigger when it comes into the battlefield. Double trigger, live totals are at seven and six. They play grapple with the past. We kind of clinch up for a second, and, and it's a total miss. They play Seder Wayfinder. This is one of the biggest bricks for them in the entire game, even though they've had huge plays against us. They find another Creeping Chill. Right now, they're putting Haunted Dead. They've got Amalgam. They're just trying to fill up the battlefield so that they can block. They know that Wayward Servant is eventually going to tear them down, so they need to have blockers. Right there, we'd use Crypt Breaker's draw ability. Even though we're at four, we'll take the life, we'll go to three, because we know we've got another Colossus there, and we were hoping to draw another zombie. However, drawing lands if you've got Crypt Breaker on the battlefield is fine, because Crypt Breaker is going to, it's just discard fodder, essentially. And every zombie we play is a double two life, uh, two life swing, essentially. Uh, we play the Diagraph, it creates a zombie off of the servants, We've got two lands up, Crypt Breaker is ready to go. The, the zombie falling off of the Diagraph Colossus that we already had on the battlefield was huge. That was, that was the thing that really sealed this for us because here we can use our discard ability. They have no options. We're gonna burn them at the top of the game, top of that next turn regardless of what they draw. Okay, so the next one I've got is insane. That's, that's, it's just, it's insane. We keep our opening hand, we've got some two drops, we end up with our uh, Corpse Knight and our uh, Wayward Servant in our opening hand, so we're, we're down for that. We're down to, you know, go to Looney Bin here. Um, right now we're gonna be a little greedy. We're gonna try and go Corpse Knight so that we can double down with the Wayward Servant, and we get censored. That happens, we'll swing with the Servant, they go to 18, and we pass. So here, if I'm not mistaken, we get a little land screwed. They're, they're cycling the cast out. They're trying to get to something. At this point, we don't know they're playing new perspectives. We're not sure what's going on, but they play the Lotus Field. They're having kind of a slow start. We top deck another Wayward Servant. So we're like, all right, being greedy didn't work the first time. Let's be greedy the second time. And it ends up sticking, which is nice. So now we draw our third land and now we can get to work. They've got three mana untapped. We play a Crypt Breaker. We get a double trigger there, and we're ready to swing for four. Now, here they flash in a Nimble Obstructionist. All right, that's obnoxious, but fine. It's gonna block one of the Wayward Servants. They'll trade. That's kind of a bummer. We had stayed open there. You know, I don't really even know why. It ended up being a play mistake. Definitely should have played the Relentless Dead pre-attack. And then they Sweltering Suns. Now, that is one of the biggest reasons I wanted to show you this game is because this deck can be, unless you've got your Anthem Lords on the battlefield and you've grown everybody above a three butt, this deck can be hugely susceptible to cards like Sweltering Suns that are running around. So here we don't have a ton of options. We've got Lord of the Accursed, we've got two Death Barons, it's a really wonky hand. Our Lord of the Accursed is getting cast out. They're playing more Lotus Fields. They've got two Lotus Fields now. We draw a Thought Seize. We've got four mana. We can Thought Seize. We see new perspectives. Now we suddenly know what they're playing and a cast out. We are terrified of our stuff getting, getting uh, removed further. So we go ahead and take the cast out. Now, was that the right decision or not? 
we don't know, but it led to a very fun moment. So New Perspectives gets played. They have to tap out to do it. We get to play another. We get to swing for three. We're one point off lethal. Now, what we're hoping here is to draw another Lord of the Accursed or another Death Baron so that both of those go to 4-4. But we never get the chance because we never get to untap again. Now, bear with me because you're going to want to see this. Because of new perspectives, they can cycle for zero. And that's what they do for the rest of the game. They are currently at 36 cards, okay? So they are just going to keep cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling. Look up there in the top. Look right up here in the top. You can see their library at 32, 31, 30, 29, 28. At this point, we start thinking, are they going to deck themselves? Kind of in a joking way. Like, this feels like we've lost, obviously, at this point. They're just cycling through, they're getting, and then suddenly we're like, oh, here we go. The Vizier of the Tumbling Sands keeps popping up. I see. They're filling up their mana pool. They've got nine mana sitting there. They're going to burn us down or some, something. Don't really know. Haven't really guessed it at this point. Shadow of the Grave. Return everything that's cycled back into their hand. They have 27 cards in their hand at this point, and they've got 16 cards in their library. They've got 13 mana in their mana pool from Vizier of the Tumbling Sands. Untapping and retapping Lotus Field. 12 cards. At this point, you can see... I, I chatted to him. This is amazing because I had no clue what was going on. This was the wildest thing. We see Lotus Field taps again. They've got 16 mana. They've got eight cards in their library. They've got 28 cards in their hand. They continuously cycle and cycle and cycle. And we're just like, what is happening? Am I going to ever get to untap? Is this the end? Do I get to play magic anymore? We see another new perspectives. That draws them to zero, and we're like, what is happening? Approach of the second sun. Okay, so they must have some cute way. Their shadow of the grave. They must have some cute way of not drawing another card, but untapping these lotus fields so they've got the mana. But how are they going to do this? They've got to draw it and play it. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to cycle another card especially with all the Vizier of the Tumbling Sands on the stack, and they end up decking themselves. Like I told you, the New Perspectives deck, that, that game was absolutely insane. We just sat there and watched it because I was so intent on seeing it happen. We're pretty sure we lost that game, but we ended up winning on a technicality. And the first game, it felt really good. It felt like that deck got off to a nuts start, but we ended up pulling out because we had the Wayward Servants that made the game long. I appreciate you watching. Like I said at the beginning, make sure to subscribe before you go if you're new here. If you want to support us further, if you are a subscriber, we've got a Patreon. Link is down in the description below. Don't forget, we are streaming Pioneer, Standard, Brawl, Commander, anything, two nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday evenings, over on Twitch. I'm tapped out. I'll catch you later. Let me know if Zombies works for you.